Okay, so that's the piece me. I think it's you again. So hi everybody. Hi. Bonjour. Good morning. Is 
got the same exact version of Shakespeare. So, which is correct? It is English. There's nothing in expressions, there's nothing correct or wrong. Because why why are you qualifying English in Trinidad's group? Because, okay, if I speak to my nanny, I ask, nanny, how are you? She'd be like, huh? She can't understand. I say, nanny, my way. She can't understand. See, the point I'm making is linguistically, a definition of a language is a common speech group, a group of people use the same expression and just understand each other. Right? Average Trinidadian, again, education is a factor. If you don't really access education, you may not understand what standard, and if there is standard Trinidad English and there's uh, standard British English and there's standard Jamaican English and there's standard American English, which is correct. American English would be good. Maybe. I think if I need a mic, I'll get this in the light. Yes, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, when you go to Jamaica, I to the What language? He speaks Jamaican part. He speaks Jamaican part. And that is an established language. When you go to the southern United States, Ethnicity, 
language, religion, and culture may come from the same source, but people move. Because in my time, I was taught French Creole meant local white. So I took the word Creole to mean local. But what does Creole mean? I don't know. So cre Creole means licks in French, right? So it means you have a you also have to remember all this is within the context of colonialism. So that because colonialism represents mass movements of people and mixing of cultures and languages, um, these issues of new languages coming out of those speech communities evolve, right? Creole has been broken. So English. We just spoke about five languages that came from Latin. It's not going in a different direction. But it's good. It doesn't make sense. Good too. But it doesn't make sense I go into things that we do clarify certain points. Right? And it's basically you come in here to kinda uh, increase your knowledge about I would say language, just being true language. Because all this is about being true language. Language is about the language you speak is about our identity, right? English, okay, so we said Romanian, Spanish, Italian. The Romance languages come from Vulgar Latin, right? Where did English come from? Germanic language. A Germanic language, right? I will say a few sentences in Dutch and let me know if you understand. Right? But it's neat here, it's dark. But it's neat here, it is dark. But it's neat here, it is dark. Not Dutch. Sometimes when I speak Dutch, I feel like I speak English with accent. It is neat for mine, it is for you. Not for me, it is for you. So it's related to Dutch, and German, and Frisian. Right? So it comes from that language family, but we see a lot of Latin words in it, right? So, what happened to English? Anybody remember history? Go back to some history and you don't know. Go back to the distance. When the, the Norman French conquered the Anglo Saxon. So the first Old English was really uh, related to German, right? Uh, it is my doctor. Yeah, it is my Gerald. That's Old English. So this is my daughter, this is my husband. And then the Norman French invaded and brought French vocabulary to it. So you had an Anglo Saxon related to German vocabulary with a sorry, grammar with a French in top. So with Patwa. So, who are the speakers of Patwa already? Nobody said it, our population. That was when the Spanish uh, basically uh, they didn't have enough Amerindians there. They all died out, and this was an underdeveloped colony. So, they uh, said our population was treated with France to bring. Place from the French colonies to Trinidad. So that would be Martin, Guadeloupe, uh, right? And they came with Atlanta. So these African slaves are French colonies, so French crew. So what do you think Patwa would have its basis in? I mention again African slaves. These African slaves came from West Africa. So it has a grammar, West African. Language grammar with a French vocabulary, just as English. So you see what happened. The people, at one point in time, English you know, didn't exist and it was related to a different language. It's kind of like the Galapagos. <laughs> just like evolving species. You go to Galapagos and you see all manner of species that you think might not have existed because it exists in a different environment. That's the next point. Language continues to evolve based on the environment it exists in. Right? So factors politically, economically, and so but it's right? I'm gonna move on from this introduction section. I'm gonna go on to some part of and understand. Any question based on that? No? Why? No, you think it's a point. There are no questions. No, but I did get questions earlier, but yeah, I mean at the end of the day, uh, that's a that's an objective market that you're interested in my talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 okay. 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 Okay.
Okay, so you can divide it. And the same thing happens here. You don't need that part here. But you almost have to go here. And you see it. Could you explain why? Why? Was it in front and why that might be? If you go to... No, I know if you go. But why it is that you have the front and the front, front areas yeah. they can English not be able to understand each other. Yeah. Yeah. I'll explain why. I, I went to China. And I went to Southern China with like over in what China. And I have friends from Southern China. Since we don't go further to any university here. And we sit down having a Chinese and some Chinese guys who are here. And look at them and you say, I can understand what they're saying. Alright. You have to go back to the show. You have to go back to one factor that influences languages. But let's let's just add a little bit. It is easy to learn the written language. The spoken language came before the written language. This is why, for example, a Japanese could be Chinese. But you have the same character. I know, but you, you have to remember people were speaking languages, and languages evolved before writing was invented. That's so. That's the point. I'm stop, stop, stop basing language on a written form. Because the written form is just a, a, a representation or a brain on a code. And somebody else could come and create. Do you see how the spell? How the duck spell? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. So in Trinidad, um, Chai Tu is C H A I T O. O O is O. When I go to Suriname, it's C H A I T O E. So the Dutch represent O as O E. And the English as O O. So that makes the point that the perspective of spelling and representation is something that is subjective to what represented in especially the spoken language. How many scripts are there in there? How many? What? Languages? Scripts. I don't know. You can't tell them, right? But I could write Hindi in all these hundreds of scripts and they would look completely different, but it's the same language. Get my point? So you should never base your understanding about the language and the writing script. Because language existed before writing. A lot of times people just say, how do you spell that in the starting word? And I say like, well you have five or ten different ways to spell it because there's no standard script. Right? However, there's a standard script for Patwa. And to be and that was because of the French government. They invested in French Creole culture in the Caribbean. So now there are books where you could read stories in Patwa. It's a standard script. But it was never always like that. You also have to understand that you have to speak more than one language to get a better understanding. You have to live it. You can't just read about language and come and talk about it. Yep. You just saw me speak French. That's one language I speak. I speak Dutch. I agree. With that. I totally agree with that. You have to speak more than one language. <laughs> but again, speaking a language, for instance, I live in all over the world, and it is a guttural language. So we have to also find out how it is the pronunciation starts. And it is coming from inside of here rather than. Because you are too much in Dutch. Which part of going to be different which, from which part of language. which part of the Netherlands is it? If you are moving, I spent three months in Netherlands. You, you listen to any Flemish? Lamps? Yes, but it means nothing to me because when I went there to let's, language was not. Let's explore it from a speaker of the language. To do. Okay. Good morning is uh good morning. What? Good morning. Good morning. You go to the south part of France, you hear, Oui, more. Oui, more. It's not that well anymore. Right? It also has to do with the environment, as I said. Because remember, the southern vernacular of Dutch is interacting with a whole different community in Europe as opposed to the northern part. Right? So even pronunciation is subjective. This is why 
so important? Well, you might want to think so it can help, but it also creates social class. Because language is something that is social class. If I, if I come here and say, good evening everybody, how are you? You would assume that I would just sit in level of education and I suppose we have some sort of intelligence at a certain point. But English is just a language, and not a measure of intelligence, like any language. So I could speak A, how are you? But still express a point and be able to think like a human being and come up with an invention. I don't have to speak standard English to do that. It's not a measure of intelligence. No language is a measure of intelligence. Every form of expression is valid. Let's, let's, go ahead. So you are, you are in fact saying that the radio announcers, when they speak um, in a colloquial fashion, that is acceptable for radio. So have you listened to Trinidad Radio? The way I'm speaking. So I'm have, you noticed, have you noticed, it depends on the clientele. Some people have the American accent. The Soka station is talk like how I talk you now. And bust the same old jokes on the radio. It depends on your clientele, right? There's an audience who accept Trinidad English group, but it's also what they play, local content. So the language goes together with that. You understand? So you're saying in the past, the audience yeah. was an audience? I understand the evolution of English. Mm -hmm. uh, what is standard English? Something like proper English. Mm -hmm. What is proper English? Both subject, object, matter. <laughs> when we speak here, we don't speak both subject, object. I could. It depends on where I want the emphasis in my sentence. What I'm saying here, when we speak in Trinidad and when we speak in any language, when we learn French, we will learn subject, first object, verb. When we did Spanish. So you're talking about grammar rules, right? We're talking grammar. Right. Let me finish my Sure, go ahead. But I have to finish my presentation. When the grammar was told, it was not with intention of speaking the language. What came first, grammar or the spoken language? <laughs> Everything comes back to the spoken language. The spoken language determines what is the grammar it changes over time. Have you read the King James Bible? Yes. Have you read the earlier Bible? Earlier version? Have you read the modern version? If you look at the translation, the crowd is completely different. King James, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. Do we speak like that anymore? You follow the rule. We say, we say, we say, forgive them, Lord, for they do not know what they do. Right? The language evolves. And so too the grammar behind it. Right? What we speak now could have been wrong ground a hundred years ago. It always goes back to the spoken language. Right? Okay. So we're going past this. Go ahead. So what you're saying? Yeah. That grammatically speaking, the rules change that we go a long time. Yes, it does. So it's back to the question. During colonial time, and in any language, the language spoken by the monarchy is the standard. Received pronunciation spoken by the monarchy of England, which was king before and now queen, is received pronunciation, and that is perceived to be the standard. Then America gets independent. Now you're talking about pronunciation or you're talking about grammar? Because pronunciation Both. and grammar. Both. Pronunciation, and grammar, and script. We cover three points. These three points continue to change as the spoken language continues to change. Right? These are characteristics of a language. Right? Before America got independence, did you know what the British had to say about their grammar and their spelling? It's atrocious. It's atrocious. It's wrong. But yet, when I went to medical school, what I learned from a British textbook in A was S U L P H E R. I know spelling it and I have to spell it S U L P H E R. Yes. And the teacher in school said, guys, decide. You're writing in American English or you're writing in British English. They can't write in both because you lose marks. Especially in both colors. Represented 
the split of a language from one to the next, which comes from dialects, spoken language. After America gained independence, they tell Britain to hell with you. I could have my own grammar. I change in your spelling. I change in the order of the words. I change in where I can give the subject pronoun versus the object pronoun. And Britain, you can't tell me nothing. Do we have novels in American English? Is American English an accepted standard in It is. Not by force. They had the economics, they had the politics, and they had the political will. Just like Australians could push for Hindustani and battle. Because they were empowered in their identity as Americans. And when you're empowered in your identity, then your language could become a standard. Let's go to Sanskrit. We know about Buddhism. We know about Jainism. So Jainism and Buddhism are sects of Hinduism that came across the time. All sects evolved from revolution. Revolution that even represented by language change. Before Gautama Buddha, the standard was Sanskrit, spoken by the Brahmin. Gautama Buddha came from Bihar. They spoke Pali. Pali was seen as, just like you say, broken Sanskrit. Broken Sanskrit. Gautama Buddha as a Kshatri. Kshatri means the warrior caste. Brahmin means the priestly caste. The accepted society here was that Brahmin should preach the word of God and emulate the Sanskrit, which is the standard. Buddha said, no, you cannot tell people what the text says, let them read for themselves. And let them decide the essence of it. So he started preaching. And he said, but a warrior caste cannot preach. There was a big revolution at that point in time. So much so that Buddhism evolved. And Pali, which was seen as broken Sanskrit, became standard. All Buddhist texts are written in Pali. And this is an accepted standard of, of uh, Middle indo -Aryan. The same with Jainism, Ardha Magadhi, was not seen as broken Sanskrit. But when Mahavir decided to stand up against the Brahmins and establish Jainism, all their books are written on Ardha Magadhi, which was seen as a broken Sanskrit. But now it's a standard. You get my point? Okay. Let's explore some expressions in day to day, in Patwa, and in Samasana. Right, we said Kuma over here, right? Where's Maka Fushet? Anybody? Maka Fushet. Good. We are the correct track is for you. You're getting there. Right, what is the English word for that? Yeah, Maka Fushet is left over, right? Look how easy it is. Mark from Mark. Afushet, mark of the folk. It means that on the food, it has the folk mark from yesterday. <laughs> right? Dr. Eric Williams used that in one of his speeches to describe the opposition. You know what I'm talking about? Afushet. Right? Okay, let's go next one. Banwas. Next popular political English. Banwas. When Basil Pardi and Kenneth, I forget his name, he died. Yes. yes, when he had, was ready to accept him back into the UNC, he said, well, yeah, he, he has come back from Banwas. And that was on the headlines. What does Banwas mean? You have the right track. The wilderness. Correct. You're close at it. Yeah. It is wilderness, but okay. Anybody familiar with the Ramayana story? The story of the Ramayana. Okay. So Ram was said to go into Banwas. When he accepted his father told him he had to leave the kingdom. As it is. Banwas means that. Yeah. But exile, and I have to, I have to give you just like Makafushet, I'll tell you how we evolved in that, right? So the Sanskrit slash Hindustani word for forest is ban, 
of Ban and Bass is resident of. So Ban Bass is the one who resides in the forest. And the long time when they get exiled, they have to go and in the forest. So that's what the team came about, right? Right? Okay. 14 years. 14 years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next one. Sararuti. What's Sararuti? Good. Yeah, it's right track. I'll, yeah, okay. Correct. Um, anybody else? What's that already look like? Play. So, Sarah, I mean? Sarah's adjective. It means it's scrap roti, plain roti, right? To get back to your point, Sarah roti is also called sekal, sekal roti. Sekal roti, right? What is the sekal roti? No, you use the word just now. Right? Seke means the big. Right? Um, Sekal is a past tense in Trinidad, which means big. So, Sekal roti is big roti. Right? And why it's Sada is because there are other types of roti, right? Like. Dal, Kari, Paratha. Paratha. That's an example of some shit. Dosti. What you notice about these other rotis? I mean, they'll be roti, alright? Or rotian. That's the plural. But in English, we are the S, so rotis. What other. Uh, what's the difference between these other rotis you mentioned and Sarah roti? Right, you don't mix the oil. You don't use oil, you don't stuff it, you just clean. Right? So we learned today that Sarah is the adjective in Hindustan, you mean plain, right? Yes. What is clothes in Hindi Hindustan? Is it much more Sana Bahar? Yes. Right, and I have a second thing called Sundar Kapra. You remember that? I love <laughs> But the Pika Pan question is what is the Hindustani word for clothes? Kapra, right? So Sundar means beautiful, Kapra means Clothes. So it means elegant clothing, right? So the competition was who dressed best with the prize, right? So you learn next adjective, sundar, right? So if sala means plain, sundar kapra is elegant clothes, beautiful clothes. So sada kapra, plain clothes. So we leave today, no, we know a few expressions, right? That's the point. <laughs> All right. Grab. Dimash grab. Dimash grab. It is not G-R-A-N-D, eh? Grab. Well, in fact, it's a guam. G-W. Big Sunday. Yes. Fat Sunday. Fat Sunday, right? Dimash grab. Right? Juve. Ouvert in French means open, yes? And jour, jour, day. Ouvert is opening. So jouer, jouer. Only open day. Because that's it, but that's the start of camp. After Dimash Brown. Right? Okay, let's do another one. Manji, Manji the Burton. <laughs> Manji the Burton. To watch. Yeah? Anybody ever with that expression? Okay, so, Fain Dustani. Right. Put up, put up, put up mine. Because mine have some like, problems. Okay, okay. Put up that one. I'll end it. Yeah. Um, Burton is where's right? Burton. But anyway, people who grow up more in a East Indian community would know these words more because they will be used on a daily basis. Manji is not a wash specifically. So I want you to describe, those who can remember, how in the old land days, which is not 
very ulam because I'm young. I remember my grandmother used to school. Um, how they used to wash your hands? What they used to use? Coconut husk. Coconut husk and? And that was one. Sand. Ashes. Where did they get the ashes from? Because every day they cook it. So all I had to do was put the fire fire aside, put it in, and she used to put it in a clean can. I remember that specifically. And she did the husk and all be in there. So basically, it's like vim, jif, same concept, right? Rough. Um, my nannies, Bartons, were always looking new because of this process of man Jane right? Now it's washing the wares, yes, but it's not more than washing because if you just wash the pot, it wouldn't look as new as she had them. It's cowing. So you use a scour, which is the husk, and the grit, which is the ash. So we draw a project. Take out the black mark, right? So you mentioned over there fireside. Anybody know what the stand with the fireside is? I have to get a picture of that. I'll post it today. Okay. Yeah. Tool hard. Yeah, tool hard. But like a tuna. Okay, let's let some count in here. You, so we know what a tuna, right? I'm going to make a friend what they want to show. Right. Um, what is it? What is it made of? Dirt. And what is it tasted with? Cow dung and clear mud. It's a mixture, right? Okay. Um. And then, well, as I use it with paste. You don't understand the word for that? The paste. Yeah. The lipe, right? The lipe. Lipe means the paste. Right? Yeah. Ah. Good. Carry your, carry your mind back to the tool hub. Do you all remember there was, well, the big regular tool hub, the main fireside in the kitchen, which was not usually in the house? It usually needs to be in a shed attached to the house or sometimes prior to that it was a separate it's completely separate outdoor shed kind of thing built right that cooking is a big place outside the house but the main chula was a big one then there was a small one and a small double one could you remember the words for those all right let me help you come from one to hindi hindustani ek ek he said do, right? Who's, who knows in the air? You know, do. Do. Ek do, right? Teen char punch. Right? Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq. They related, eh? Right? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. You realize the kind of song, you see? Yes. Because it all came from Latin, it's related to Sanskrit. Actually, Latin and Sanskrit was once one language way before humans recorded history, right? Um, so the one bula from ek was ekela, ekela, and the two bula, well, in Hindi say do, Spanish dos, French du. So, so okay. use that ekela in Hindustani. Sure, not Hindustani. It's not do, but it's doi, doi. Right? So, what was the suffix we added to ek? Oh, be real careful, yeah. Ek, ayla. So, add the do to the ayla and what you get? Do ayla. Do ayla. So, do ayla was the double do ayla. Right? Good. Now, another on it. Anybody remember any other expressions? Whether it be fat or Hindustani from in China? Paisano <laughs> bar. Right. And before I tell you what it means, I want you to tell me where have you heard that expression before, specifically in which context? 
Okay, so you just translated exactly there, right? What's the English? No money? Yeah, no money. It's essentially things like that. Right? Or I have no money, or you have no money, or we have no money, or she have no money. Right? But then you see, you're going to play all the words. As a code. Hey, it's not about me that I have a chump. Because chump is pesa. Right? But the original meaning of pesa is. It's just it. Money. I said money, right? Okay. And it, this this is going great. Uh -huh. Right. So paisa naba na is a negative. So there is no money. I have no money. Take out it and ask if you have money. Paisa ba? Paisa ba? You have money? Ready? Right? Get that? So you could use this expression that you know if you know the grammar and then you can figure out what you can take out or what you can add to make it. So we learn now is no or not. Right? So pay sanaba, I have no money. Pay sanaba, you have money? Right? Okay, this is going good. Anybody remember any of it? Okay, okay. And you tell me specifically in what context you heard that word used. Right, describe the process. Because that's a that's an email. Yes, 
cosas se les va a ir frente a este doctor. Oye, Huye. Ahí sí, la Ok, Buje, Buje, Curry. Ok, Buje, 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 Right, what is the let's say Buje Lava? What is that? Buje Lava. Right. And the second one is Buje Lava, Buje Lava, Buje Lava for Dulai and Dulai. Lava. No, just you said Buje means? Too much. Fat. The thing. Fat is rice. Right, but there's not any rice. What kind of rice? Rice with the husk. Rice husk. Where is called that? Nah. What? Nah. Where is called that? Nah. Nah. Yes. Nah. Now you know what? So rice in the husk, if heated, pops like popcorn. Right? There is a special ceremony during the three-day wedding, which is usually Saturday night, the things change up now, they do it one Right? For convenience. Just like language, things evolve and realities change. Um, yeah, on the Saturday night, the, the bridegroom or the bride's mother's sister, no, father's sister, Pua, would take a chula, put a, a, a pot, Put the firewood, heat it, and then take small amounts of rice and put it under the cup. That's what's called lava. Right? There's a very important significance of rice. Not only in, in, in Hindu tradition, but in all traditions. Why? Hmm? Food, food. Abundance and prosperity. Food in any civilization represents abundance and prosperity and fertility, right? So it, it, it's, it's supposed to be significant is to confer that to the married couple, right? On both sides, because both sides do it and then they mix the lava the next day in part of the offering the fire the offering, right? Um, but it changes from society to society based on what is stable is. So in a, in a, in a people of Indian origin context, Rice is usually a staple, so they use your rice, right? Um, they also use it in Christian weddings, the throne, which also represents prosperity, right? I want you to realize that whatever we practice, despite ethnicity, despite religion, has the same impetus and thought process as human beings, right? So whatever divinity you believe in, that comes from a process of realizing that. And that process started from same point, just like spoken language, they evolved into different things. Just like religion, just like language, they evolved into Spanish, which is a different language. Spanish has double negative, no? Eh? No, no thing or nada. I don't have anything. It literally means I don't have nothing. But we can't say that in English. But yet still, the Spanish would say, but I'm right. And the English would say, but I'm wrong. But English and Spanish come from one common ancestor. Same with religion, no? Good. That way, that way. Right. Um, so we spoke about oh, so let's talk about the Indian wedding. Right? Alright. How much days do you are accustomed to the Indian wedding for? What are these days called? Which is true, not much for you. But she always taught us broken English. 
but that's not true. Haldi is more than Southern Hindi. She's a dialect based in Delhi. She's only Queen's English, she's standard, this is a power, Delhi, this is a power. That is different than standard. But prior to Delhi, this is a power, there was a different standard. The language of the world. Like American English superseded British English in America. Same thing happened in India, right? So Haldi is standard Hindi, but the Ra in Hindi becomes Ra. Haldi becomes Haldi. So do not let any Hindi teacher or any speaker of Hindi, you as a Trinidadian, do it with Haldi, is correct. It's not broken. It's a separate line. It's like you talk in Portuguese and they talk in Spanish. When you Portuguese, man, then it's Spanish. I know you say it wrong. You talk in Spanish. And it's and Portuguese and Spanish is one for language. By the way, Para in Trinidad represents the time before Portuguese and Spanish states. So it actually is a really a variety of Spanish. Not the Para of today, because now they use Spanish. Spanish, Spanish, right? From Spanish grammar rules of today. But if you listen to that Para from the before Zen time, modern people in Spain and Venezuela would say, but that's wrong. But it's not. It represents an earlier time of the last one, right? Hardi Kira, Hardi Kira, or the next thing is Friday night, right? Because that's the night you apply the Hardi. Hardi is saffron or turmeric? Turmeric. Right, not saffron, what's saffron? Because it's average for Hardi, but it's Hardi is saffron, right? What's saffron? Saffron. No, saffron comes from a pollen from a plant, which is more expensive. Whereas turmeric is the hardy, the root. Yeah, the difference. Right? The color is the same. Saffron color, right? Okay. Does it night you apply the hardy skin on the bridal room? As you are not using the standing with the bridal room. Dulahin, dulaha. But in the real, dulha, dulhan. That's standard. Trinidad and Tobago is Dulaha Dulaha, right? Like Gadha in Hindi is Gadha, but it's Gadha. Right? Notes, these are not broken forms. This is a separate language, right? Good. Then the next name for Friday. Marty Khor. Marty Khor. Why was it said that Trinidad is? Mati means dirt, for dirt. Court means digging. Digging of it is. Because that night is when the sister of the bride or bridegroom goes to the nearest water to dig some dirt to ask mother for fertility and prosperity in the marriage. So they actually say specific formulas as mantras on Sanskrit and ask permission from the earth and ask permission to take the earth, which is Mother Earth, back to the house to apply to the altar where the marriage ceremony will be performed. Right? There are deep significance behind why we do these things, right? And it's not just ritual. Right? Good. So that's uh, Mati Khod and Arvikira. What do we call this Saturday night? Cooking okay, idea, I think it's true. But I never grew up with that movie. When I went to Suriname, then I knew it. Right? And it goes back to the point of rice. So, what is the hot price? Dhan. Right? The word hot one comes from the word hot. What is bhat? Which kind of rice? Cooked rice. Right? Bhat. Dal and bhat. Rosy garaway cooking for dinner. Dal and bhat. And the man to you are the Right? Dal and bhat. Dal rice. Right? Bhat is cooked rice. Dhan is unhusked rice. What do we suppose the husked rice? So in this towel, you can see that in the Indian restaurants. 
Ciao. But he turned out to a priest. Ciao. 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 Right? That is before he ever boiled it. That is what the first grade is. Sif Chuli, think of whatever. Stone or beaver or whatever. That is a ciao. After you boil it, it's hot. Right? So it's very important about that specific name to different stages of rice in preparation, right? So the word hot one comes from hot. Because it's the coconut. And that's the idea of the rice. Hot, right? Why do you need to cook so much rice? Remember the days without cars. How many? Right? Donkey cat, but nobody wants donkey cat. Everybody else is. They're walking. If they're walking, right? And then I can't buy it. No, 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 no. So they cook the rice to eat in preparation of a long journey to the other house. That's why they get batuan. Right? The night of cooking of the rice. Right? Also, that is the same night, the patch of Bujari Lava. Right? In preparation for that journey, but that represents the fertility and prosperity boy on carries the girl house. She does the same. And on the marriage ceremony day, fire worship is significant not only in Hinduism, eh? in the temple of Zion. What represents the God? Exactly. Fire and rice is very important. Irrespective of, because it's very vital to the survival of humans. That is why fire and rice is given a significant place in Christianity, Islam, and Buddhism. And Buddhism and whatever else you want to say, right? So I just give any significance and context, right? Um, what, one? what is the Sunday night? Because well, that is our night, isn't it? Yeah, there is a married day and thing like that. Actually, what will happen is a good but one night after they eat. You travel and get married, you night and come back in the day. Night wedding, that is good. I never see one, I young. That is happened a long time ago. Right? Right, what is it in this standing word for? The wedding day? Which is the Sunday? Sadi. Sadi Bia. Bia how Sadi, right? And it is Shadi. Shadi. But then, what is Sadi? Shopping Sunday, then it becomes Sir. Give me an example. Bas Dev Pande. It's Bas Dev Pande. That's Sir. Go on, that's Sir. Kamala Pusar, be Sir. Be Sir. Be Shish. What? Becomes Be Sir. Means Lord of the Universe. Right? Be Sir means God. Be Shwat means Universe. So, Vishishwar of Vishishwar, the internet goes to me, a lot of English, right? So, you see us like Portuguese, Spanish kind of thing there, because the pronunciation changes, right? Good. Well, then, like, so, since we're doing days, let's do the days of the week, right? But we just not do the days of the week, because you're going to realize something here. As sure as I did, it'll strike a chord. Yeah. Who knows in the year besides the meter? Most, mm, most people not, right? Why are we going to do this Saturday days? Because you will hear that more often now in a general context that the words I'm going to use in Trinidad and Gospuri will only be known by a select few who have only a few years to live. Good? And I'm going to relate to Spanish as well as French. Right? Everybody should learn Spanish here. Yeah? We need to because we have 10% of the population in Spanish. Right? I think as an English speaker, we should ignore our ignorance of English measurement and intelligence and connect with people like Nelson Mandela said, speak to a man in his language and touch his heart. And every human being must, even a refugee. Right, and the English language. Who's the second? Who's the second in English language? Why are we talking here? No, no, no. No, this is actually what I was just talking about. English is. Depends on the population. Cantonese, yeah. Right. It's number one. It's not French. French is two. Spanish. Spanish. Right? So he gave you a reason to learn Cantonese, right? Because who are we looking at for? 
I spent, I spent, I spent a second. I, I go out and I study because I'm already trained on board. Yeah? The guy posted a part, so I couldn't make it today. So I had to kind of come with ah! it. And I tried to mix it up. But it's good, it's good. <laughs> right? I'm artist and you are a representative after, so if you're interested in learning part or turn out much for y'all, you know it, right? Remind me to do that because I'll forget. Because I get so engrossed in this language too. Um, so we reach where? Tuesday? No, Mongolo. Right, we skip Monday. As a boy and a girl born on Tuesday, Samar. Samar is Monday from Thumbag. So, Samar. Samaru is a boy born on a Monday. Samaria is a girl born on a um, no Monday, so bad is Monday. Mangar is Tuesday, so Manguru, Mangari. Um, good. No, I mixed it up. That's my fault. Okay, okay. so could I carry? Oh, you understand? Yeah. I just cook. Alright, okay, good. Okay, right. Um, yeah. Budvar, Bud in Bhojpuri becomes Budhu. Budhu. Do I name Budhu? Do I name Budhu? Budhu? Original Budhu, right? Budhani, that's a girl name. Then Thursday is Bipe from Brihaspati. Become Bipan, Bipani. Those names you don't hear anymore. The olden times. Yeah. You have it before? Yeah. Or you have it? Yeah, actually, yeah. Coming to the end, you have less, less of those names. Right? Saturday is Shuk. So, sorry, Friday is Shukravar, Suk in Bhojpuri comes Suku. And our girl is Sukiya. Suku Sukiya. Not Sukuya, eh? Sukiya. Well, I'm sorry, you're gonna go to the Friday. Because then I tease and say, hey, is that Sukuya to come by Okay, again, there's no standard spelling. There's a standard spelling in, in Devnagari script. By the way, when Bhojpuri was brought by an Indian liberals, the script you know as Hindi was not the script used. It was actually Kaiti. Because there are letters that exist from Indian ship time and it's not written in the script you see in your written. It's written in a different script. So it means that if during an Indian ship, what is standard Hindi and the script didn't exist. Right? Actually, standard Hindustani at that point, which is Hindi, Urdu, was written in Nastaliko, Urdu, or Arabic script. That only changed after the independence of India, right? But the informal or Bhojpuri standard was KT script. Yeah. Sanichar, Sanichar is the Indian and Sanicharya. I have a few patients that are last name, Sanicharya. A patient woke at one time and her name was Sanicharya something, Guru or something. So I was like, you was, you was born on a Saturday? And she's like, yeah, no, who you right? <laughs> From that tradition, I will end with family relationships there. I'll probably do some part work. I don't think I'll have time to do that. Anyway, and Saturday is so it's said itwar in, in, in Hindi, so it's aitwar, so aitwaru. You know what I mean? Aitwaru. aitwaru tree is some sort of. Well, that's the anglicized version. Say it? Aitwaru. Aitwaru. Well, I guess it's the same thing. Aitwariya. Aitwariya. Right, there are a lot of females with the name Aitwari, right? And if you, if you see somebody online, I said, Hey, were you born on a Sunday? Right? And I'm like, Oh, you don't know that? You can read Patra? Are you some TMI? Anyway, alright, let us do family relationships. Because it's important to emphasize how scientific understand it, right? And I'll go back to that Greek, Roman, and Vedic civilization linguistic terminology. Who was who's the biggest planet we mentioned before? Jupiter, right? What does Jupiter mean? Ju means sky. Ju means sky. Pita means Pita. Okay, it thinks. Yeah, that's it. Jupiter. So Jupiter is Latin, it means father's pair. Right? When we go to Greek, it comes Zeus Pita. Zeus, king of the gods. 
Yes. When you go to the Rig Ved, it becomes Dupitre. Dupitre. Dupitre, Zuspita, Dupita. See the name? Yes. Let's go to Mother. Right? What is mother in Latin? Mother. Now that's Dutch. Mother. Same related, ma. Mata. That was the alma mater. Right? Mata. Mata. We get mère in French and madre in Spanish from mata. But does mata sound familiar? Mata. It's Hindi, Sanskrit for mother. Right? Which comes from matru. 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 Pitru. Mater. Pater. You see? The link? And it's common true. So that in Hindustani, which comes from Sanskrit, remember a lot of Latin was lost because of Roman Catholicism. So even in name it like Saturday and Sunday, change. In the same way the family relationships change. But Bonjour. Okay. No, it's boss, boss way, sorry. This is night. Um Right. Uh, yeah. So most family relationships in Hindustani from father to is pa. So your father and sister is pua, and your father and sister husband is pupa. Mother side is ma, mausi, mosa. Right. In Hindustani names, you might think, check. I have 15 minutes again. Right. I'll use this with the proverb because I can start to know it. Now um, block. People have to come to the same. Have I just a nice little presentation of take. Um, so it's very important that in Hindustani, when you mention a relative, the name changes dependent on which side. Right? So when you say Mo C, it and when you say Pua. It's aunt, yes, but put in on aunt. So whereas English uses an adjective to describe which aunt, in Hindustani, it's one way. Right? The family tree is too big and complex. Right? Just before I go to the presentation, if you're interested in learning patwa, right? Play up one patwa if you want to learn patwa. You could join us at Lloyd Best Institute. I know you guys from South. Lloyd Best is based in Tunapuna, right? We didn't get enough people ready to stand for the patwa, but I have a small group that learned in Trinidad Gochpur. I find that learning these languages are important because it gives us validation and empowerment in our identity as Trinidadians. And we do think we speak broken. And we do think that we are uneducated because we speak broken, right? Quickly, Trinidad English Creole. Let me do some of that. Right? Past tense, of course. First person. English. Standard English. I went. How we say that in Turner English school? Do you say I went? I did go. I did go. So did past tense marker and the verb. I did go. That's the past tense in Turner English school. It's a different grammar and vocabulary from standard English. I did go. Not actually like both English, but when you say did did I go? No, I didn't go. No, no, no. I didn't go. That's what I'm saying. When you say I didn't go, that sounds like far away, right? When you say did I go? Yeah, but that's the same word, but it does not sound again. Hmm? The word order changes with the language, right? Um, patwa, because patwa is moe te ale. Te is past tense of it. So it's moe, I, te, de. Ali, go, Ali, go. Same exact thing. Right? What's present tense of who is present? Go. Go, to go. Who is present? Present tense. No, I go. I go. I go. I go tomorrow. I go now. Right? Or habitual, it goes, I, I, I usually go. Right? Turn on English girl, I just go. I just go. 
Thus is the present tense marker attached to the raw verb go. Did go, does go. Patwa, kale, kale, does go. Kale, mwe kale, mwe kale. Yere, contracted mwe kale. Chache kale. Mwe kale sawa, chache kale mwe. Agwe ni sawa, zao kumwe kamada. Sorry. Ah, patwa. Right? Um, and then future tense. English, standard English, future tense, first person, to go. I will go. How is it in general English group? I go, go. Go, future tense marker, attached to the root verb, go. Then we use the next one, eat. I go eat. I will eat. Right? The fact is, if you say any of these expressions, any trainer, they will understand it. And if they could understand it, it's a language. Once expressions are used by a speech community that understand by everyone, that's a language. And I grammar rules of Trinidad, English crew, past, present, and future. Right? Let's just go to this quickly. Ten minutes. Just come on the side. I'll run you. This, this was initially what I was supposed to present, but because of technical difficulties, it was hard. Um, I'll do it, okay. But I can't go to the speaker. Alright, you can hear me then? Alright, well, you stay there, Sanita. I'll take this off. I'll go to the back and I'll just I'll switch it. This is the only style I got, eh? I didn't get any other slides. This is the only style I got. On your stick? Yes. Oh, you stick in there so you could you could bring it up. Did you copy a question? When I was there, this is now this. I don't open mine. Right, this is just to reinforce what we did earlier. So I have diagrams because I pulled everything from my head. Another one. Yeah, funny I can say I sweat in bar. 
Then in the sun, you say, come, get past it now, Ella. I swear, Tim. Come and look at him. Yes? Okay. Right, so this is the workshop. Like the map shows where people have been in the region like this. So if you notice, who are Luke and Martin, you can very easily. People forget, they are uh, in Jamaica as well. There are 40,000 people of this in the region. And most of these people came during the leadership time. So with these people came their living language of China as well. Because they came from Yuki Bihar, right? Yuki Bihar is not Dini. Dini is Hindustani, is standard now. But prior to that, Ram Chirita Manas was written in uh, Nili Rama's story, and poets would have written in the Jerry language, which you would call like Shakespearean, right? So Shakespearean actually is a different English vernacular from modern standard English, or is it And for a different grammar, we have a different spelling. If you would look at Shakespeare's original plays, it didn't spell how we spell today. You would say it's probably wrong, but it's not. That would stand there, right? Okay, okay there is not wrong. Accent is not proper. Slang is not uneducated. Patwa is not improper. Decolonized language. Your understanding of language about the standard, standard English, is really a remnant of colonialism. Free yourself from that. Right? I mean, you gain the fact that you're educated. Yes, I enjoy it. But it's once I went home to my place, I was in a mosque, and I asked the whole lady to walk through the garage driving, and is there a mosque around? She was like, what? You can understand. I was like, you have a mosque somewhere right here? She understood. So it, it represents the fact that these are experts. Is there a mosque somewhere around here? It's not the one who understands it. No, it's not Right, so look where Bojpuri is under Magaki upper branch to that side and look where Hindi is to this side. So they're actually cousins, they're not even dialects. Right? Portuguese versus Spanish. Right? This is the guy who did research on Indian languages and now these things like Bojpuri, Gujarati, Punjabi, you can say because he did the linguistic survey of India after the British came. That's why all you want to try speaking for that, don't know what most food is. They don't want to understand it. Right? They say, Hamar, my bath, you can understand it, but I want to know what I want. My, my grandfather spoke to understand it. And next one is India. They don't know all the truth. Hadar, Bojh, Pakistan, Bojh. Right? What's that? Bhai, 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 one is from English and the other 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 one don't let anybody tell you, we are Musa Roy, eh? That's true, right? Say, Billy Roy, you talk about this, right? Roy, man. 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 Any time I pass it, then PC in my sala. That's all. PC means to grind. Load her. Is that person there? And sin is grind. What is the word for season? Ya pisau kan? Kalau kita nak pasin dia dia pisau kan? Masala. Kita sapi. Nanti. Kecik cawet. Ada sapa kan yang itu kiri? Sapa. Adi. Sapi. Nanti dan keluar. Nanti itu lebih pot. Pot tu. Sarah roti. Real pulau ini nanti. Means rice. Pull away, pull, power, blossom, go to swell. What's that? Sara roti or Dama Dolwa Ketu. Dama Dol is the Trinidad, it's the Sanibu for 
You can be white, Bob. That's fine.